In this video, I am going to compare and contrast every 50 watt mobile GMRS radio available on the market today. And because there are only five 50 watt GMRS mobile radios that you can choose from to purchase, this video should be nice and short. But we'll see how that goes. First of all, Unlike many of those other less trustworthy YouTubers, I have actually used and tested all of these 50 watt mobile GMRS radios. However, I no longer have any of them except for the BTEC Pro, but it is boxed up already and ready to be given away to a lucky viewer. All of the other ones I have already given away because unlike all of those lesser YouTubers, I give away most of the stuff that I do reviews on to my fans and viewers. Anyway, basically I will be comparing the specs and features of these 50 watt GMRS mobile radios and at the end of the video I will tell you which one to buy. And just in case you decide to purchase one of these radios or you want to look up more information on them, for your clicking pleasure I will put affiliate links to all of the radios in the information section of this video below or on the side, or wherever it is today. I should also mention that some of these 50-watt mobile GMRS radios I did receive for free from the manufacturers, and some of them I paid for myself. I don't remember which ones, but if you think that I am going to make any one of them look any better than the others because I got it for free, then you should just stop watching now because only a complete idiot would watch a video of someone that they don't trust, right? First of all, allow me to go over everything on these five radios that is the same on all of them. All of these radios come with the standard 22 GMRS channels and eight repeater channels, except for two of them, pre-programmed right out of the box. No programming is needed to use any of these radios. All of the radios you can take right out of the box and start using with no extra programming required. You only need to change the programming if you want to do something fancy. All of these radios can talk with all other GMRS radios irregardless of the brand and all of these radios can talk with all FRS radios irregardless of what brand they are. And all of these 50 watt GMRS mobile radios transmit only on GMRS channels, meaning that none of these radios can transmit on hams, radios, or any other non-GMRS frequencies. So please do not leave a stupid comment asking if they can. All of these radios can transmit in the standard wideband format of GMRS, and none of these radios can transmit on channels 8 through 14. This is because of the FCC's rules, not because of any kind of technical limitation or design flaw in the radios. And none of these radios can be unlocked, meaning that no matter how hard you try or no matter how smart you think you are, they are only going to transmit on the GMRS channels and nothing more. And all of these radios have virtually the exact same FARs even if the power output is slightly lower or slightly higher on some of them. If you have some kind of laboratory equipment, you might be able to detect some small differences in the FARs between them, but when you're talking with humans and using human ears with any of these radios, the FARs on all of them are virtually the exact same. First of all, we have the BTEC GMRS50 V2, which costs $220 of monies, affiliate link below. The GMRS 50 V2 is not a super heterodyne type radio. It is an SOC or system on a chip type radio, also known as a homodyne, homodyne type radio. It is chirp compatible, but it does not come with the cable needed to program it with a computer. And it measures about seven and a half by six by two inches in girth. The GMRS 50 V2 can receive commercial FM radio, VHF from 136 to 174, my gigahertz, UHF from 400 to 520, my gigahertz, and NOAA weather channels, but it does not do NOAA weather alerts. And it can store and remember 256 custom channels. The GMRS 50 V2 allows you to listen up to four channels at the same time, and it has a full color screen. However, the screen is kind of small and very crowded and very busy, 
and it may be difficult to read for those of us that are of an older persuasion. The power output when I measured my GMRS 50 V2 using my Farzometer 2000 power meter was 40 watts. And the GMRS 50 V2 does not have a Roger beep. Next up is Midland's 50 watt offering, and the Midland Corporation actually has two 50 watt GMRS radios to choose from that are both very similar to one another. The MXT 500, which costs about $385 of monies, affiliate link below, and the MXT 575, which also costs about $385 of monies, affiliate link below. And both of these radios, indeed all Midland radios, are designed to be very simple and very easy to use, and they are marketed to people that are not radio dorks and that just want a GMRS radio that they can throw into their car or their Jeep or their truck boat truck and communicate with their group. These radios are not intended for radio dorks that want to bounce their signal off the moon or that want to chat with anonymous men. I cannot find this anywhere in the Midland documentation, but I have been told by a former Midland marketing employee that both the MXT 575 and the MXT 500 radios are combination SOC or system on a chip and super heterodyne type radios. But I cannot confirm this and it does not really matter because the people that would be interested in either one of these radios would have no idea what that means and do not care, nor should they. And the current models of both of these radios can do standard GMRS wideband, unlike some of the older versions of these radios. For simplicity, when you take either of these radios out of the box, they do not do repeaters, which makes them even more simple to operate, but you can change the settings and enable repeaters, should you choose, but their repeater use is very limited. Basically, what I am saying to you right now is that if you are a radio dork, neither of these Midland 50-watt mobile radios are intended for you. However... If you just need a radio that is very easy to use and you do not get all turned on by a bunch of knobs and blinky lights, then either of these Midland radios are probably exactly what you are looking for. The Midland MXT 500 is a very small radio that measures at about 2 inches by 5.5 inches by 8 inches long, and it has a small but very simple and very easy to read screen. It can receive only the GMRS channels and NOAA weather channels and NOAA weather alerts. It can store and remember 99 custom channels, and it can listen to only one channel at a time. As I mentioned earlier, that none of these radios we are discussing here today can transmit on channels 8 through 14, but this radio takes it one step further. It does not even have those channels in it. On most other GMRS mobile radios, you can at least listen on those channels, but this radio just skips over them altogether as if they never even existed. The MXT500 has an IP66 rating, which most mobile radios do not have, making it virtually waterproof. So it is a great choice to put into a side-by-side -side or an open off-road vehicle that might get mud or rained on or wet inside. The MXT500 is not Chirp compatible, so you have to use Midland's very simple to use software to do any custom programming, but that is optional and it does come with a programming cable. It has a USB-C's charging hole to charge up your phone, and it can also connect to many intercom type systems so that you can use it with a helmet intercom system like in those side-by-side -side type vehicles. And when I tested my MXT500, the actual RF power output was 47 watts. And both very sadly and very surprisingly, the MXT500 has no Roger beep. The Midland MXT575 is an all-in-one handset radio, meaning that you throw the chassis under the seat and control everything via the microphone. And the MXT575 is usually sold in a bundle with the antenna and everything that you need to use the radio right in the box. Whereas with the MXT500 and all of the other 50-watt mobile radios, you must 
purchase the antenna and cable separately. I am told that the MXT575 is also a combination SOC or system on a chip and super heterodyne type radio, but I still cannot confirm this. Just like with the MXT500, the 575 is a very simple and very easy to use radio marketed to someone that wants a simple to use, no bells and no whistles radio. And this is a concept that radio dorks seem to have trouble grasping. So bear that in mind when some people complain about either of these Midland radios in the online forums. This radio, just like the Midland MXT500, is not made nor intended for use by radio dorks. The MXT575 pretty much has all of the same features and functionality as the MXT500. It is basically an MXT500 with all of the controls and screen moved into the handset. It also has a USB C's hole for charging your phone or whatever you can jam into the USB C's hole, but it does not have the intercom connection plug like the MXT500 has. And the MXT575 is so simple to use that you cannot even program it from your computer, and Midland does not make any software for it. And the power coming out of my MXT575 when I tested it was. 49 and a half watts. And unlike the MXT500, the MXT575 does have a Roger beep. Next, we have the Wuxin Ocean KG1000G Plus, the longtime undisputed king of GMRS radios, as voted by radio dorks all around the world. The Wuxin Ocean KG1000G Plus costs $390 of monies, and it is a bit larger than the others at about five and a half by two by eight inches when measuring from the base. Always measure from the base. The KG1000G Plus can listen to two channels at the same time, and it can receive commercial FM radio, commercial AM radio, 50 to 53, my gigahertz, which is also known as the Hams Radio's six meter band. 320 to 349 my gigahertz, 400 to 479, and 700 to 985 my gigahertz, as well as the NOAA weather channels. However, it does not receive NOAA weather alerts. And it can store and remember 999 custom channels. The KG1000G Plus is the only radio of the bunch that is a full super heterodyne type radio. This means that even though normal people are not going to notice or care, the circuitry of this radio is a better design, making it more sensitive and more selective than an SOC or homodyne. Homodyne type radio, meaning that the KG1000G Plus may pick up weak signals better and it will do a better job at filtering out bleed over and static. The KG1000G Plus has a very easy to read screen that is remote mountable. This means that you can throw the radio chassis under the seat somewhere and mount the smaller screen and controls someplace convenient, or you can leave the screen and control panel attached and mount the whole thing like a normal radio. Your radio, your choice. It has two built-in speakers and a speaker in the handset, and it is designed to plug into another KG-1000G Plus radio to be used as a repeater, should you ever choose to do so. The KG-1000G Plus is Chirp compatible, or you can use Wuxin's Oceans free software, but it does not come with a programming cable if you choose to optionally do the fancy programming via your computer. When I tested my KG-1000G+, Plus, it outputted 47 watts, and yes, as with all high-quality two-way radios, it does have a Roger Beep. And finally, the newest entry in the 50-watt GMRS mobile radio world, the new BTEC GMRS 50 Pro, which costs $285 of monies. The BTEC GMRS 50 Pro is an all-in-one handset radio, much like the Midland MXT575, so you control everything from the handset and throw the chassis somewhere out of sight. It has a USB's A-hole for charging up your phone or whatever you want to jam into the radio's A-hole, and it has an IP50 
54 weatherproof rating, so it is basically dust and water resistant. The GMRS 50 Pro can listen to two channels at the same time, and it is an SOC or system on a chip type radio, which, as previously mentioned, is often referred to by all of the true radio dorks and radio experts as a homodyne. Homodyne type radio. It has a full color handset screen built in GPS and compass. It can optionally send your GPS location to or receive location information from other BTEC GMRS Pro model radios. It has built-in Bluetooth and you can optionally program it wirelessly using your phone via the free programming app. The GMRS 50 Pro can wirelessly copy custom channel groups to other GMRS Pro radios, whether it be the handheld or the mobile variety. It has an audio relay option, which is almost like a repeater, kinda, and you can use it with Bluetooth headsets or even AirPods. It can receive commercial FM radio, 136 to 174 my gigahertz, 400 to 520 my gigahertz, NOAA weather channels, and NOAA weather alerts, and it can remember 180 custom memory channels. And when I tested mine, it outputted 41 watts. And yes, it does have a Roger beep. Now, of course, as usual, I probably missed something very important about one of these radios that is very important to some people. And if I did, now is your chance to prove how much better you are than me by leaving a comment and pointing it out. And if you have one of these radios, leave a comment and let everyone know how much you like it or how much you hate it. But now allow me to answer the big question that everyone wants to know. And that is, which one of these 50 watt GMRS mobile radios is the best and which one should you buy? My friend, <sighs> listen closely, you should buy the radio that does the things and has the features that you want or need in the price range that you can afford. And you are going to have to figure that part out all by yourself.